Hi everyone, so as per your requests in the previous Get Ready With Me, I see you, okay? Y'all have been asking for an ultimate beginner's guide to like makeup. And I'm not saying I'm some kind of expert, but this is how I want to break it down. And I'm sure like those of you that have never like really touched makeup before, it can be very intimidating to see all of these like tutorials and even just like the displays upon displays at Sephora, like you don't really know what to pick. So today I'm going to walk you through the three main purposes I think that a beginner's would want to use makeup for one conceal your imperfections two balance your proportions and three enhance your features these are like very simple basic things that you can do with makeup and I feel like it's easy to show you what I mean and I'm gonna be talking as if you've never like touched any makeup at all just to make sure that all of my bases are covered in case someone out there really hasn't like touched makeup at all and you're looking at this like oh my god to help illustrate my point I've never done this before I'm gonna do it uh, I'm gonna do this side of my face correctly and I'm gonna do this way incorrectly there are a lot of different techniques and different things that people like to do I will just show you some of like the easiest mistakes like a lot of beginners make because I have seen like you can tell when someone's like I'll also be using like drugstore affordable makeup. So stuff that's not expensive, stuff that you can very comfortably like start out with. Keep in mind that you don't need every single thing. In fact, a lot of things like makeup wise that you can just double up on like your lipstick can be your blush as well so just get the things that you feel are most essential to you and I'll show you what is like most essential based on what I'm doing on my face and the problems you might have and how to correct it so just make that decision for yourself I grew these pimples specially so I can conceal them no I'm just kidding <laughs> who the fuck will grow pimples before we get into the makeup I need to stress this first oh my god do your skincare girls and guys please do your skincare get to know your skin if you have acne what kind of acne do you have redness is your skin oily by being best friends with your skin and getting that like really one-to-one -one confrontation you get to understand like what your skin needs and you also get a better idea of what kind of makeup you want if your skin is too dry you want to go for something with a little bit more shine something more dewy something that boosts like hydration if you already have very oily skin you would want something mattifying like your ideal is to have normal skin just right in the middle, not skewing too far off anywhere. So basic steps are like washing your face, toning, serum, and moisturizer. These are like the basics. If it's in the day before makeup, always put on sun protection. Just spend that money and get sunscreen. Even if you don't want to tone, even if you don't want to put serum, put a moisturizer and put sunscreen that's good. So because it is 3am in the morning and I have nowhere else to go and I'm not seeing the sun for a while, I'm not going to put on sunscreen but I have my skincare prepped. I have combination skin so I get like oily and dry. So I actually put a very generous layer of moisturizer, let that sink in and then I also put an oil control sort of balm on my T-zone just so that I don't like... <laughs> I'm gonna skip primer and everything just because I don't think it's like super important to learn about that as a beginner. I don't think you need it. So the first basic thing that you need is always concealer. These are my favourite drugstore concealers. These are from Maybelline. These are the Fit Me. Ooh, they're just so great and they are so, so affordable. I think they're like $16. So as you can tell, I'm like almost done. This is in 20 sand and this is in 15 fair. And as you can tell, there is quite a difference. Sand is a lot warmer. Warmer being that it turns a lot more yellow and it's actually more complementary if you are Asian against our skin tones because we tend to just go a little bit yellow. And then fair is a little bit more on the cooler tone meaning that it goes towards more pinks and it is a little fairer. Clearly, sand is a much better fit for my skin. So that's what I'm going to be using. And I'm going to show you why you might not want to use something that's a little too light for you. Especially if the only thing you're using is concealer. I got these um, like baby caps for my fringe. Alright, so look into the mirror kind of see where you need concealing. Mostly out there right now, you'll see two kinds of concealers. One is a very watery, very light, very blendable kind of concealer. And the other one is a very thick, less blendable version of the concealer. So something that's a little more paste-like and then something that's a little bit more liquid type. And then there are like a lot in between. Lah. But basically the reason why there are two different formulas or two different textures is because the creamier, dense one is for concealing like pimples, imperfections, things that you don't want to be like sliding or budging around because that happens. Your skin is a living, breathing organ. And then sometimes like things soft shift. You'll want something that's like full coverage, heavy duty. That's what it means. Full coverage means like 100% cover. 
90%, you know? And then on the other side of the spectrum, you kind of get the more watery, blendable, light ones. And those are not bad concealers. Those are just meant for your under eyes. So the skin around your under eyes is actually a lot thinner than the rest of your face. And it also has the propensity to look very cakey. Cakey meaning very like thick and like you have stuff on your face. Like, you know how, like, flour and water sort of blends, like a cream and a blend? Like, it just looks very, like, nah, nah. Like, that's cakey. So when you apply concealer, you don't want something that's super thick, super full coverage. Even if you have very bad eye circles, then it will look very heavy and just very, like, ugh. I'm gonna do that. Ooh, shall I do that? Okay. So this is one of the most full coverage concealers that I have. I know I said I was gonna recommend you like affordable stuff, but I don't really see a lot of like concealers, at least in drugstores and stuff, that are very, very heavy duty. So this is what I mean, like super heavy duty, like you need to warm it up in your fingers to like get a little bit. And this is number one, which is a little light for me. So I will show you how it looks. It also damages your skin because it is so ridiculously like difficult to blend it's meant to be like that it's meant to like stay put i'm not gonna do like drastically like purposely like i'm fucking it up okay so i'm just gonna show you like a very realistic way of how i would do it can you see how awkward that sort of looks i will zoom you in come come look at this disaster it looks like not my skin like you can tell that I put on concealer, even if I try to blend it out. And I'm already giving this an advantage because this one warms up when you finger it. <laughs> this one warms up when you put your fingers in it because there's the warmth sort of like melting it and letting it like be more blendable. If you go in straight for brush, it's gonna be like cake city. Since we're already here, let me show you how it will look like with too light of a concealer. Even if it's something a little bit more blendable. It's a very subtle, but like, what's up with your face kind of look. So this is how having something too light or too heavy would look. It would just look a little off. Okay, since we're here, let me show you the correct way. So the reason why I like the Fit Me is because it's light and it's blendable, so it's great for your under eyes, but at the same time, it's also great on, I want to say, acne scars. So take a look in the mirror. You can tilt down if you want. This gives you access to see the entirety right here. The darkest part is this part, right? So you want to put like a dot. Don't do this. Don't draw it too harsh because that's like IG glam and they want to look good for photos. And it looks really, really great, especially when it looks carved. But when you just want to conceal like small little bags and you just want to look as natural as possible this is the best way to go you can always add more but it's not a good idea to put too much and then try and take it away just blending it i'm also gonna try and like reduce my use of brushes unless i absolutely need to because i understand that brushes are expensive and they take a while to sort of accumulate so this is how it looks i put a little bit on the inner corner as well just because it'll be a little bit weird if it's just like that so as you can see it really seamlessly blended in. Judging from where it is, I think I can put a little bit more. Don't push or pull on your skin, don't tug. I don't even want to do it on my own skin to demonstrate. Just pat, just pat, 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 pat. I promise you it will blend. Do you see the difference? Can't tell that I ever had dark circles. Girl, what you trying to hide? Oh man, this side already looks so bad. <laughs> I think a good thing to get would be something sort of in the middle, something that has medium coverage and something that is exactly to your skin tone because then you can use it underneath your eyes, you can use it on your skin and it won't be like an awkward light patch. So let me show you what an awkward light patch looks like. Mmm, beautiful. See that? Don't take the Dove Look Applicator and put it on. I guess this is the wrong way, so I'm demonstrating the wrong way, but don't do that because then it sort of transfers all of the bacteria on your pimple onto this beautiful Dove Look Applicator and you put it back and it just sort of like sits in its own germs and it multiplies. It's just a nasty place to be. So, let me show you. Do you see that this is not the colour of my skin. The little bit of offness is all it takes. Tada! Wow, it's like I never had pimples. See what I mean when something is a little bit too light coverage? This is actually a very buildable concealer, so it's actually not a problem because I can just go back in. So a good thing to do is to put it on your fingers and then 
go in. Another mistake I feel like a lot of beginners make is putting too much because they want to conceal as much as possible. And trust girl, I've been there, I did that. But it just looks very unnatural. Once you start blending it out, you'll start to realise that the bits that you really wanted to conceal are not being concealed because there's such a big patch that you need to conceal and then you just gotta add more and more and then blend more and it just looks kind of ridiculous. Do you see how much like concealer I've had to blend just to make it look natural to the point that it's right in the middle now? I need y'all to fully like understand how bad this looks. Wait. It looks patchy, it looks off. So let me use the one in my own colour. My nose naturally has a bit of redness on this edge too, so I just like to just put a little bit, make this face. <laughs> and then I have this one spot right here. I use a clean finger, so this is the finger that I applied with, I'm using this finger to blend around the edges so that the concentrated product is still in the middle and still hiding the spot that I wanted to hide. And there's a bit of redness here so I'll just use whatever leftover. I hope I'm like making a bit of sense. If you're like, the other side doesn't look bad and I'm like, okay lol. It's a very subtle difference. I'm sure it'll get worse as we go along but this side of my face looks like I really didn't put on any makeup at all. And then this one, you can sort of tell there's something on my skin. So when you want to conceal your imperfections, the golden rule is to make your skin look like your skin. If your mole show, if a little bit of like redness show, I don't think it's the end of the world. People know that like it's your skin. And I think it's quite important to let a little bit of your skin show through to make sure that it looks natural and it looks like yourself, especially if you're making that like transition before like you figure out, okay, I want something a little bit more full coverage. Especially Especially if you've got good skin, like you don't have to be plastering things on. Okay, so that is concealer. If you're an absolute beginner, that's the first thing I recommend you master and like, I guess, buy concealer, try it out. If you want to do foundation, we can now. Uh, we can. If you want to do foundation. Yeah, okay. okay. I'm trying to look for a foundation that's like not my skin tone. But it's really hard. I don't think I have one. Ooh, <laughs> speak of the devil. Okay. Guess who came to say hi again? Hi, my friend. Oh, oh, he's a yawny boy. All right, for foundation, I'm very tempted to cheat because I want to use this on my skin. If you really want to treat your skin well, I feel like foundation is something that you want to splurge on because it goes on every part of your face and it's something that you will be using semi-regularly I feel. So I'd recommend something with skincare in it. The It Cosmetic CC Plus Cream is really good. There is Normal which is this one. It gives you like a normal finish. This one is for oily skin. It gives you a matte finish and this one is for dry skin. It gives you sort of like a nice pearl dewy finish. What do they call it? Illuminating. Foundations can come in very many different forms. Sorry, I don't have like a drugstore version. One can come in a CC cushion. So a lot of Korean brands actually do have those. And then there's also the standard like bottle liquid foundations. And there's also stick foundation. So something like this can also double up as a concealer because it's meant to be a little bit more high coverage. So the more watery, the lighter usually and then there's also like mineral and powder foundations unless you have like super sensitive super 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 oily skin i wouldn't recommend you start with that and i don't really use it i don't know a lot of people that actually continue using it so for the sake of the wrong side of my face not that i don't like this foundation this is the innisfree my foundation in 2.3 i think it's a little too light for me so i'm going to show you what it looks like when you are using something that's a little bit too light because even the slightest bit off. It's just, you can't even tell it's off. Oh, you can tell. <laughs> eh? Have I not been in the sun? Uh? It might be my car. <laughs> so this is a problem that I feel like a lot of people have. First is that they apply foundation like straight like this and they apply a lot of it. You definitely don't need so much foundation, but let's for the sake of it. Also go with a really bad brush. This is the Real Techniques foundation brush. I don't think you should use it for your foundation because it 
is very streaky. Okay, this is definitely not my colour. Great. So this My Foundation is pretty cool because you can choose your shade and you can also choose how dewy or matte you want it. And then you can also choose like your coverage, I think. I think the matte is a little bit more full coverage. So this 0.3 is like mid coverage. But you know, when you put too much and when you don't blend out the sides here, that's what I meant. That's why you need to key up. Pull it back, sis. Pull it back. This is what happens. It's almost like a mask. And it's very, very uneven. I guess it makes the concealer look okay now, but just it's just a mess. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't feel like I'm going too far. This is real. This is real life. Oh my god, I'm already spilling over to the other side. Oh, I feel like another beginner mistake is to not blend it even a little bit onto your neck. So when you like do this and you show your double chin, you should blend into that chin and a little bit here. I understand how frustrating it is when you are wearing like clothes, especially white colored clothes, and then there's like foundation stains. It's ridiculous and I hate it. But look at how ridiculous this looks. Get your skin tone matched. And not just in the store, go out into the sun, make sure that it looks good. Take this, squirt like a little bit, and then do this. And then go into the sun and check. It should be exactly your skin tone. It shouldn't even... Like, you're like, oh, that's close enough. Or if you blend it and then you go out and check. And you're like, oh, this, this looks fine. No, it doesn't. So you have to make sure that it matches before it's blended. So that when you blend it, it's like same tone, same colour, friends. For this side, I want to show you all something that I feel like I have stood behind and talked about for years and years and years. Don't know if you can still get it, I hope you can, but this is from The Ordinary and this is the Serum Foundation. If you already have something like this, which is like a full medium coverage foundation, and you want to share it out, you don't have to buy a new one. You can always get your moisturiser and mix it in. Make sure that they look like they are mixing well and they're not like separating already on like the back of your hand just sort of mix it around because that will sort of share it out and you can apply it as a little like foundation like moisturizer cocktail and that will share it out so this one is already sheared out for me it's very very watery this is how watery it is you can see the difference and this is pretty much my skin tone i'll use my fingers to prove it okay see because it's a lot lighter, it's a little bit more forgiving if it's a different shade. Um, not that it is the different shade, it's pretty much my skin tone. I like to work like bit by bit. So this is not obviously the most professional way to apply foundation. In fact, I don't really apply it with my fingers. But when you have something as light and as malleable, remember to get beneath your eyes as well, if not you'll look... <laughs> kind of weird like that. Don't worry if you get it on your eyebrows because if you're planning to fill in your eyebrows, that shouldn't be a problem. Make sure to really share it out towards the side of your face as well. When this matches my skin tone a lot more, I don't really have to go down. In fact, I don't want to. So I'll just sort of scoop. So your double chin area. And also work with it fast. Don't work with it slowly because it will start to set on your skin. Like paint dries, it will be a different texture. It'll just be sitting on that surface. So this is the wrong side. You can see this part is very heavy. My neck and my face is ridiculous. This is a lot better. If I were to do this, it's the same. My skin still looks like skin. It's blended throughout, even with my fingers. It still has a little bit of like shadows and your natural contours of your face. Oh my god, it looks so fucking horrible. Okay, I'm not gonna do it so dirty. I'm just gonna try a little bit more do you see how streaky this is i mean if you want to be a van gogh painting like go ahead but sis this is not the way to go look at this mm -mm. look at that yum next thing you want to do is to balance out your proportions look at your face <laughs> See what is like the biggest feature, the most prominent feature that you have. And then in contrast, see what's the least prominent. Are your eyebrows a little sparse? Are they a little non-existent? All of these things and bearing in mind what you want to achieve. So if you want to achieve like a balanced face, if you want to adhere to certain beauty standards of having like big clear eyes, um, fresh, like nice juicy lips, um, a smaller nose, that sort of thing, you can go with that. If you don't care about that, then you can just sort of play with your proportions. So the best way to also judge sometimes if you're like a little bit distracted by the lack of eyebrows it's just to fill them in first and see what you're missing so come on in welcome welcome so for the purpose of this demonstration i'm gonna start with the wrong eye first 
and I'm gonna show y'all what I see a lot of girls doing, okay? I'm using the Etude House like eyebrow. You can find it like online in stores. It's super cheap. It's like four dollars, something like that. And it's one of like the easiest eyebrow pencils I feel to start with. It has enough pigment, but it's not super harsh. It's not super creamy, not super waxy, and it has like a nice little thin isosceles triangle shape to help you like get started. So I'm gonna show you what not to do to start here and do this. <laughs> the one thing you don't want to do is to draw a straight line from here to here. Just drawing it like that. Ah, I feel like I'm doing something very blasphemous right now. Already you can see how harsh and how severe it looks. There's no clear tail as well, so it's just sort of messily filled in. I'm going to zoom you out so you can just see the atrocity on my face. I have seen girls in like JC, like they used to look like this like all the time. And I'm like, are you serious? And it's such a pity because like they have such nice features and then I cannot see anything but their eyebrows that are super super severe and filled in. It's actually way worse than this. Let me let me really, really go in and show y'all what, what they were doing. My eyebrow hurts from doing this and I'm like pressing so hard. Alright, okay, this is a good example. So, if you look at your face, your eyebrows should not be turning downwards. You sort of permanently look very unimpressed or just very bored and it's way too long. So, I used to make this mistake where my eyebrows would go past past, past, past where they're supposed to be. This is something I would not recommend, something that is way, way too harsh. I feel like even if you try and feather out the top, which I feel like sometimes, you know, people that make this mistake don't even do, it still looks severe. It's just way too much if you really come and look at it. Come, 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 come. Okay, so on this side, I'm going to show you guys how I like to do it. If you don't have tweezed eyebrows or like shaped eyebrows, I do recommend you try and shape them a little bit. Tweeze out the bottom bits. So the bits that don't look like they are part of your eyebrow, they're just sort of here. Just pluck them out. And if you don't have like a super nice like defined eyebrow, don't worry about that. You can just follow where your natural shape is. If you want to change the shape, eventually you can. But now just stick with what you automatically have. So just follow your natural brow shape because it's going to look the best for you. It's going to look the most natural as well. I like to start from here. Short, feathery, light strokes. You don't want to press down at the end. So you want to like boom, boom. And then from here, you want to almost draw in hair strokes. And I know that I have quite a generous like tuft of hair here. So I'm leaving it alone for now. So lightly. I could even like dot it like this. Making sure that the point here, it's very difficult to get like a very super sharp line, especially with this eyebrow, and I don't blame it. You can always do this, which is why like if you aren't really needing foundation, you don't have to put, so then you can just like... Ooh. Usually on the other end of the eyebrow pencils, you will get this. It's like a little brushy, mascara-y thing. It's called a spoolie, so basically... It's meant for you to comb out your eyebrow hairs. If they're a little bit unruly, this is the best time. Comb them up and out. You can also use it to soften the strokes. So this is the difference between the two eyebrows. Big difference, right? Yeah. I know dark, fluffy eyebrows are trending right now, but especially if you're not doing this to purposefully have these like thick, blocky eyebrows, it distracts from the rest of your face. People can't stop looking at your eyebrows. It's just not like that natural and like easy of a look to pull off. Whereas this one is just naturally enhancing what you already have and really helping to balance out the proportion and like the shape of your eye. So this makes my face look a lot more balanced than something like this. So I'm just gonna go on to like this side and just fill in a little bit more because this part is a little patchy but I would rather you be a little patchy in the front than too much because like I said too much you can't take away. I do feel like this eyebrow can be a little bit more sharp so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cotton bud you know make a firm decision where you want it to go and just sort of go under it. 
I don't go over it as much because um, it's nicer for it to look a little less severe on the top, but it's nice to have like a clean sharp line underneath. So from here on out, you can choose how you want to balance out your proportions. For me, I feel like my eyes are a little bit smaller and I would like them to be a little bit brighter and a little bit more defined. So I want it to pop, I want it to come out. So you can do several things. You can add highlights, you can add contours like shadows, and then you can also add definition. So eyeliner, mascara, that that kind of thing will help make it like come out more. And then if you want to recede something, let's say, okay, I have my nose that I think is like too big and too prominent. You can add more contours so that it will slowly recede like it's sitting further back in your face. All right, with that, I'm going to go through eyeshadow. So I have this Sonia Kashuk palette with me. And the reason why I chose this is because it has all plain matte meaning there's no shimmer it's like a solid matte <laughs> color so something like this is not very clockable <laughs> so if you want something that looks like no makeup makeup you can go with something like this because the browns can actually mimic the shadows on your face and then the lighter peaches beige color can also mimic the highlights on your face so i will show you i will show you don't worry so with eyeshadow if you have like a shimmer eyeshadow like a nice cream shadow you can get away with using your fingers to blend but specifically for matte eyeshadows especially, those are a little bit harder to blend because they're more chalky, more powdery, they're just sort of less creamy. So you'll need a brush. So I would recommend if you are a beginner just to get two brushes. The first brush I would recommend you get, I'm going to get a bunch of these so you can sort of see what I'm talking about. These are blending brushes. You don't have to get all four, just choose one, okay? Is fluffy. They sort of mimic like a hot air balloon kind of shape. This one is from Wet n Wild. I'm pretty sure you can find this on Shopee. You can also find on Shopee like full-on brush sets for like $12. They're not super fantastic like blow you out of the water but they're good enough to get you started. And from here, I'm gonna pick a matte brown colour that would most resemble what a shadow would look like. So nothing too red. This is something that's too red. If you're like, oh my god, that's just a brown. If you really look at it, it's more red. This one is actually better. This is a little bit more of like a yellow, cool tone brown. This is an orange. So this is a pretty okay matte brown. I'm gonna pick it just a little bit. You don't have to kick your brush in it. Tilt your chin back so that you can see all of your eyelid space. And I like to start from here. So depending on what kind of eye look you want, you feel like your eyes are very small and you would like to open up some space. What you want to do is add more highlight here, all the way here, just to make your eyes look a little bit bigger. If you have very big eyes and you feel like you want to like tone them down, bring them back a little bit, then you can take this shadow matte brown colour and sweep it all over your eye. But always start from here. So your eye has a socket, right? This part is where everyone is talking about. This is your crease. You can literally feel where your bone is and then where it like sort of disappears into your eyeball. So that's where you want to put it. Once you've deposited the majority of the colour, because from pen to skin, that's where most of the pigment will, will end up. And then you can take it and just do a windshield wiper. If you want like that dark, sultry eye look, you can always like really smudge it out. If you like a smoky look, just go in like this. But I prefer to open up my eyes. And I'm really going back and forth and taking my time to blend before I add on more colour. Going in circles. I'm not doing this so the bristles are sort of wonky and stuff. I am just touching the ends and then blending. And I'm going up higher a little bit now because there's less pigment and I want it to blend. If you have more space, then that's good. Slowly blend up. But don't go up here because this is where your brow bone is. Use your fingers and really feel. So this is where the eye socket ends for me. So if you were to do this wrong, you would take this brown, kick it up. <laughs> and you would start here and just do this. God, I hate it. If you blend it up too high, even if you do a very good job at blending it, this is what happens. 
it will look muddy too fast. If you want and you don't mind and you've got a smaller brush, I also recommend you taking that same colour and just putting it on the outer thirds like that. It's such a small difference, I don't think you can really see it, but it just sort of gives your eye more dimension. Don't use the blending brush because it's gonna be too much, so I'm gonna just show you how that looks like. And also don't go too close in here. You're just giving yourself the shadows that you have concealed with your very pudgy concealer. Now I want to put some highlight, right? So if you want really natural beauty makeup, you don't want to put any shimmers or any like, you know, fun things, you can always go for something lighter like this. You can actually choose a soft shimmer, like a pearl soft finish. A pearl is like in between matte and like shimmer glitter. And I'm gonna use this brush. And I'm gonna show you all. This is a very good brush to have. I have so many of these. It's a shader brush sort of style. So it's more tapered and thin and flat on one end. Pigment packing friendly sort of shape, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good, good choice of words, Linda. So you definitely want an eyeshadow brush like that. It can be as flat as this as well. Doesn't have to be so um, thick and juicy, but I like it thick and juicy. With the highlight, I'm gonna put it right underneath the brow bone. There should be like a natural highlight already. I don't know if you can see a difference because it's, it's really very subtle. In the spirit of truly utilizing different things for different purposes. I'm gonna use the highlighter that I'm gonna use and this is from Colourpop. This is Lunch Money. It's one of my all-time favorites. It's a really good, like very fun Colourpop specific like cream to powder finish. Can you see? It's, it's not quite a cream. It's not quite a powder. It's something in between and it gives you just like the easiest like most natural like shine. I really love it. So I'm actually gonna use this for my highlight shade today. And I'm going to apply very lightly, careful, because this can be so easily overdone. Right on the top. Yeah, so you can see that dimension. And I also like to add a little bit on the inner corners. You can also use your fingers for this if you want something a little bit more intense. So as you can see, it just adds a little bit of shine, a little bit of like an oop. It just draws the light to your eyes. So brightens up your eye, makes it look really, really good. In comparison to this one, let's see if I were to go crazy with it, okay? If it's too intense and you start almost a little too low, it can blend in with the rest of your makeup and make it look a little muddy. It could be way worse than this, you guys. Whoa, okay. <laughs> also, if you don't take care to really position it right on the inner corners and you sort of just put it any old where, you sort of look like you have an oily exterior. This is the difference that it makes. All right, so let's say you are someone that likes a little bit of glitter in your eyes. You just want something a little special. If you want just a wash of colour, you can do this with or without all the highlight and contour. I really like these two colours. These two colours are also from Colourpop. They are fantastic for every day. These two are colours that I would wear without anything else. Just smear it on my lid and we're good to go. This one here is called Glisten. Ooh, beautiful. And this one here is called Wattles. Looks boring. Ooh, do not be fooled, sis. Do not be fooled. It's so fabulous. Glisten is a nice peachy colour. When you want an all-over shade, you can get something that's very brightening or you can get something that gives you more dimension in a darker way, like this. Both are beautiful, stunning colours. Let's go with Glisten because Glisten is a little bit more brightening. Dab a little bit and start from the centre from the centre nearest to the lash line and then I'm just sort of pushing the colour out. Can you even see the difference? 
so this is how glisten looks on my eyes like i said very very forgiving very nice peachy gives a little bit of shimmer but not too much it's actually quite work appropriate if you want something to bring a little bit more color into your face you can also use this glisten a little bit on your cheeks sort of tie it together you can also use this as a blush so that's what i was saying like you can use blush and bronzer as your eyeshadow you can use highlight for the eyeshadow highlight what you don't want to do with this color I guess is to put it on the outside because you don't want shimmer on the outside because you can see it sort of cuts your eye short and makes it look kind of weird it just looks bad it just looks bad so for this one you see shadow is blended seamlessly you can just apply the eyeshadow on top and it will blend all together very very well next up we're here for eyeliners when I first started out I had three things Concealer, eyebrows, and eyeliner. That's all I used and today I'm going to show you all all the different kinds of eyeliners that you all can get. The first kind of eyeliner that I feel like it's very beginner friendly, easy to start out with is actually the pencil eyeliner. I also have the Rimmel Scandal Eyes one. This is a coal liner, K-O-H-L. And it's super, super easy to use. They do look very, very similar when you swatch them. The one thing that sets it apart is usually how long they stay, whether they'll smudge, that kind of thing. So so depending on how your eyelids are, if you are a little bit sway like me and you have like oilier eyelids, they tend to move and they tend to smudge. From my experience with like pencil eyeliners, they do tend to transfer. When I put them on the top, they transfer and they sort of smudge out the bottom and it makes the eye look very messy and stuff. So I don't really like to use like pencil liners a lot, but these are really great when you want to have like a darker, smokier eye. And if you don't have oily eyelids, this is also great because it's very easy to draw. I don't think you can achieve a very very sharp like winged eyeliner look if you just want to outline your eyes you can do a very rough one like the one that i just did and then um use like a q-tip if you don't have any other eyeshadow so you know because you don't want to be removing your eyeshadow right or you can use like um, a nice soft angled brush like this you can use a smudging brush so it's something like that but like smaller thinner you can use it to sort of blend it out but you can also just draw a thick firm line i'm gonna do that now and i'm very tempted to pull it so i can do it tight like this but that's not a good idea because like I said, don't pull on your eyes. It causes wrinkles and shit. So this is how a normal eyeline would look like. But be careful not to do this, which is extend it so far that it's like sort of drooping downwards. So this makes your eyes look very tired, very droopy. You know, if you want to do this. Do you see that it's starting to transfer? right here this is a look if you want like a smoky eye kind of look but if you want a natural look this is not the way to go because it's too severe you shouldn't be lining the inner corners of your eyes just maybe the outer if you really need that definition if you don't need the definition i would say don't even bother you can just put on some mascara down there or if you can just leave it alone it also makes it look very heavy so this eye for me has a higher crease so i can actually still see a little bit of my crease above but what happens when you do something as thick and as chunky as this line i will do it even chunkier first of all it will crease and second of all your entire crease and all of your eyeshadow your beautiful eyeshadow just sort of disappears underneath your eyeliner so this is something that you don't want to achieve unless you're doing it purposefully obviously if you are a beginner and you did that smudge you wouldn't go out just like that you would try and move it away so that's what i'm trying to do this is a look you know what if you want this to be your look that's fine but this is something that's not natural the next kind of eyeliner that you'll find is something like this it comes in a little pot and this is actually a gel eyeliner when i first started out doing makeup and i was watching all these like makeup 101 for like beginners they always say like start out with gel liner because it's the most simple but to be very honest with you i very rarely go for gel eyeliners for me i just find the brush a little cumbersome and sometimes when you dig into the pot you can get a little bit like more than you bargain for and then you gotta like wipe it on the back of your hand it's just a little messy so i found that the easiest way for me to start especially because at that point when i started i had monolids meaning like i had single eyelids this is a liquid eyeliner but this is actually a felt tip so if you can see it bends together because it's like a felt marker as compared to something like a brush as you would believe 
brush-like. You can get more precise. It's a little bit more difficult to maneuver, especially if you have an unsteady hand or if you are just very new to like creating thin lines and you're just a little bit scared. I will say that felt tip liners, it's very difficult to get a very nice, thin, clean line. So if you feel like you want a very, very thin line to start off with, I would say start off with the brush liner and just practice. I'm going to be using the felt one even though I feel much more comfortable with the brush one just because the felt one is really easier to start out with. If you do have monoliths, congrats, okay? It's very cute, it's a new look, it's very in now, right? You want something that will still show when you open your eyes because with monoliths, it sort of folds and rolls inwards and so literally eats up your eyeliner and just disappears, right? It's very frustrating. You can only see it when you blink. Just looking straight forward or even a little bit tilted up, you can see where it folds in and then just make like small, small dots and sort of like map out where the shape can be and then fill it in. And after a while, you will notice like, oh, there's a specific like way I like to do it. But right now, if you're just starting out, it's a very simple and quick way to find out like how thick your eyeliner needs to be. I like to start from the middle and work outwards and then connect from the inner eye to the middle because then I can control the thickness a lot better. You can also put your eyeliner parallel and then you can do it like this. You get a lot more precision and stability rather than doing this. Rest it gently. I don't think your foundation will transfer. I like to see like the bottom curvature of my eye and where it goes up. And then I will draw that wing in. So it's here. Right? I don't know if you can see. I have like one last strand of extension just hanging in there. And then... I join it and I extend a little bit. So that's my wing. And then I'm going to go from the inner corner out. It's easy to slowly thicken it up because ordinarily you wouldn't be doing this. You would want both sides to match. And so when you go slowly, start from as thin as possible of a line and then see which side you need to like add a little bit more. Once they're even, you can stop. Once they're to your desired thickness, you can also stop, you know. I like to give a little bit more thickness towards the end. Important to lift your eyebrow so you can see the line. By the way, I turned on like my mirror light just because I can't really see. If you put eyeshadow over, you can see that the eyeshadow is not that black anymore. Yeah, by the way, if you have um, pencil eyeshadow and you feel like it's very smudgy and really weird, you can always take like a matte black eyeshadow, something like this, and then just go over your pencil eyeliner. It will soften the look and it will help set it because the powder goes onto the cream and it sets together. It's like... Whoosh you know, like a Lego brick. But if you do it with any other colour, any other eyeshadow, especially if it's shimmery, it sort of dilutes the black and makes it look a little bit funny. So obviously what you want to do is to go back at it again. And I didn't put the eyeliner too thin or too thick so that it covers the crease, but I like it just a little bit like this because I still want the eyeliner to show from here to give it a clear definition because my eyes need it. I know some people that don't need the definition here, they start their eyeliner or like, you know, they do a very thin line from the middle out and that creates like a nice wing on the ends as well. So zoomed out, here is how the eyeliner looks. This one obviously looks like my normal eyeliner and this one just looks a little heavy, a little lopsided. As you can tell, I don't know if you can tell, but my face here just seems a little more, mm, you know? All right, now for mascara. <laughs> I don't know how and why it looks like this. I think it just sort of wore off as I put it in my bag and stuff. But this is the Voluminous Lash Paradise from, I want to say, L'Oreal. This torturous device, my friends, 
is an eyelash curler. I like to curl my lashes right before I put in mascara because then the curl doesn't drop. And the reason why you want to curl your lashes is because it makes a very big difference in opening up your eyes and making your eyes look like they have lashes, which is why you put on mascara in the first place. I'm going to be very honest with you, I don't really care for curling my lashes. Also because I've had lash extensions for a while and they're just naturally curled. Like you can see some of the remaining strands that have like stayed on my little soldiers. But on this eye, it's pretty much all gone. And my natural lashes are very stick straight. Usually I don't give a shit, but today for demonstration purposes, I am going to show you guys how to curl it properly. It looks painful, but it will never be painful unless you're pulling like this when it's still clamped down to your lashes. So just don't pull. Just hang, release, make sure it's released, and then let go. Just put this top bar, align it with your lids, and then push, and your eyelashes should be trapped in. You can see my one lone eyelash extension. You can tilt to the side, make sure you're getting it. Oh, they're already curled. Wow, this is pretty good. Where is this from? I think it's Shumara. You can find these for very, very cheap anywhere, really. And you want something that's a little bit more gentle of a C so that it can capture like every lash. So what you want to do, squeeze, let go, check. And then some people also like to like do the edges and like, you know, as they move further and further away, they like curl it. But I don't think it's very necessary. Also because I have very short lashes. So if you have longer lashes, maybe that's something you want to do. The other thing is when it does look like it's like an L shape and it looks funny, it looks strange, that's a crimped lash and you don't want a crimped lash, you want a curled lash. So don't crimp it too tight. Don't hold it like in weird angles. Just slowly curl it, see how it is and then go back and curl it if you need to. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. My lashes are... Ninjas, actually. Wow. Okay, I haven't used this in a while because sis has had extensions for a long, long time. You see this? Ugh. <laughs> what I like to do when I get mascara out is I like to wipe the wand in a tissue and you'll see that a lot of it comes off. When I first saw this trick, I was like, are you guys crazy? I didn't buy this freaking... $30, $25 mascara to just wipe like most of the product off. What do you mean wipe it off? But sometimes you just really have to because if not, it will collect on the bristles and the bristles won't work. It'll basically be like a bunch of goop. And then when you apply it, it'll look very spidery. So that's how it's very clumpy. It's like difficult to apply. It doesn't give you long, beautiful individual strands. But you see, it's still giving me some color, some length. This particular mascara, I love for the volume. So what I'm doing now is I'm tilting my chin forward and up, looking down at a mirror and then applying it. So I'm really releasing like all of my lashes. I like to do a zigzag motion and I like to pull through. So I don't just apply and then I just leave. Okay, take off. No, you really stay committed get the inner corners as well. I do the zigzag because um, I like to separate the lashes before pulling them and also it helps distribute the product a bit better. When I start out from the base of the root, I don't just go up here and I just... Ta -da -da. You can also take a name card, sorry, whosoever name card this is, put it as like a shield. You can also use it to pull up your lids, which is very handy. And then you can just go to town with it without like fearing that it's gonna smear your eyeshadow or whatever but you know this is fine too um i usually don't bother with the bottom lashes just because i don't feel like i need to especially if i've already put in a little bit of eyeliner and also because sometimes like it just makes me feel like it's a little bit too much and sometimes i do smear it i don't know if you can even tell the difference it's just very very subtle and don't pump your mascara like this because it will just dry faster. You're introducing air and germs and everything into it. Oh, I hate it. And someone like this part has still got my lash extensions. So don't focus on the length of this eye because with the extensions, it's still going to look pretty amazing. But focus on the clumpiness, okay? Oh, that is my completed eyes. So this is how I would normally do it versus how I really would advise against. 
So from here, we're going to work on our face. So let's do the whole shebang because since you're already here, you probably want to know like what's contour, what's highlight, what's blush and like what's what's bronzer and what's, what's the difference. I like to do shadows towards the highlights. So I like to do whatever's darkest because I feel like that should blend in with my skin tone the most and it can benefit from more blending. So if you put highlight first and then you put contour and then you put blush, the highlight will be the most muddied out because your brush will sort of go over it the most. So that's just my preference. So the difference between contour and bronzers is bronzers are supposed to make you look like you've been in the sun tanning. It's a golden bronze colour, therefore it's called bronzer. For contour, it's just for you to look more chiseled, introducing shadows into your face rather than introducing like a sun-kissed glow. So this is from Innisfree. These are their contour slash like bronzers. This one is for when I'm a little bit more tan. It's a little bit more red tone, but when I'm tanned, I can pull it off. This is the Mineral Shading 08, and this is Mineral Shading 07. So I feel like 07 would probably be a better fit if you want like a very natural contour look. This also works as a contour. This is from Physician's Formula, and this has a really, really beautiful like finish on your skin. If you notice, it doesn't have any shimmers in it, but it's not entirely matte. So it kind of mimics the texture of your skin the most. Can you even see it? It's right here. Nothing too shimmery, nothing glittery like that. Um, there are also cream contours, but there aren't a lot of like drugstore affordable options for good cream contours. If you want to splurge, I do recommend you getting the new um, Fenty bronzers. I think it's really good. I like O1 for contour. It's not really a cream bronzer, like a bronze you know, nice, I've been in the sun kind of thing. This is really great for nose contour and if you're a little bit more fairer skin. Today, I'm going to work primarily with powder products because I think powder is a little bit easier for beginners. Um, it does require brushes, but like I said, you can find the brush set like on Shopee or Taobao. It's very, very cheap, very affordable. The reason why I'm recommending powder is because it's a lot more forgiving and you can kind of have fun like feeling like it because cream products can be, if they're not great cream products, a little bit more um, challenging to blend out, especially if you already have some powder products in the mix and stuff. So as a general rule, you want to put all of your cream products together you know, it's like all the wet ingredients first, then you add the dry ingredients. You want to put all of the creams, the liquids, so your concealer, your foundation. If you have cream bronzer, cream contour, cream blush, cream highlight, just put them on now. And then set it with loose powder, setting powder, and then you can go in with your powder products. For me, because I have like dry patches and oily skin, sometimes I do skip setting powder, meaning that I don't set it at all. If I know I'm not going to sweat, if I know that like I'm not going to be in a humid weather, I will skip it because I think my skin looks a little bit better and less cakey when I don't set it. But if you have very oily skin, it's best to set it. I'm using a lot of Innisfree products. I guess Innisfree is like really affordable and really great. Uh, they're not sponsoring me. Maybelline's not sponsoring. No one's sponsoring me. This is the No Sebum Mineral Powder. This is from one of their like limited um, Toy Story editions. But this is also really affordable. It's like less than $10. Comes with its own powder puff that you can use. Um, so if you don't have a brush, you can definitely use this. But if you use it like after foundation, it sort of does transfer. So I won't recommend it and I would recommend you wash this from time to time. If you have a fluffy brush, any kind of fluffy brush, kind of like this, this, any kind of like fluffy face brush, just a little bit, you press onto the areas you feel like you need the most. Don't sweep, sweep, sweep because if your foundation is a bit more liquidy or slippy slidey, you can push and create more streaks. And it sort of whips it up almost and creates that cake-like foundation look. I like to set my nose as well. I just don't like my nose to look very shiny under the eye. I don't bother setting here because uh, my skin doesn't get oily there. But I'll set it here. Where you put on the concealer, especially if you have a pimple, you want to have a light dusting. And then once you've sort of set it, I can take it very lightly brush away the excess. I like to go with translucent um, loose setting powder because I think it's very easy and it's the lightest coverage. If you feel like you have very oily skin, you want it to work, 
even better or if you want to carry a compact around there's another option which is pressed powder so this is the L'Oreal Infallible it broke on me it's fine it's still really really good though so on days where I'm like really really oily or days where I need a little bit of coverage but I don't want to put on foundation but I just want like a quick dusting I just use this okay so let's get back to contour now I press a little bit of this I start from where my ear is where my hairline is and then I like to locate where my cheekbones are so I can see where the natural shadow is and I can just top it up. So a lot of times like people do the fish face and they put it right here. That's too low for me because my natural shadow where my cheekbones are, my cheekbones are here, my shadow is here and then this is like a divot and then this is my jawline right so so when you're doing this in circles it basically like gives the pigment a chance to move around on your face instead of just like doing this if you want it more like more intense you can definitely like pat it down but right now you just want to sort of blend it you can always add more but always start out from here and then blend in because if you start out from here first you're gonna see it's gonna look weird another thing that can help is smiling so these are the apples, just right here, right below. But I don't like to smile while applying too much because I feel like it creates like mini lines and creases. So smile, locate, let go. And then I'm taking a little bit more. I like to go heavy on contour because I feel like my face can tahan. So I will just sculpt along my jawline. I like to blend it up a little bit more. I like to take it down to the neck as well. Why not? If you have a very big forehead or if your hairline sort of starts like here instead, you can always do this. Pull your hair back and start from the hairline. Don't worry if a little bit of the pigment gets into your hair, that's fine. It's better than starting like here and realizing that there's a bald spot here. So you can do this. It's not supposed to be something like life changing. It's supposed to just help you reintroduce the shadows, especially if you've had foundation or if you just like to look a little bit more sculpted, a little bit more model-esque. Let's do it the wrong way around. I'm going to use a colour a little bit darker and a little bit more red, putting too much all at once, right? And then if you don't pull your hair back, and you just sort of start here, if you go a little lower, do you see how it really doesn't do anything. It doesn't really sculpt your face. It just sort of gives you a patch of brown. But if I were to do that fish face. <laughs> so this is the look. I don't think I'm gonna actually throw in any bronzer because I'm already like pretty warm from this color. But if you don't have a contour and you have a bronzer, that's something that you can do. This really does nothing except show everyone that you've tried to contour versus this makes you look like you just have naturally higher cheekbones, a better sculpted face and it just doesn't look as awkward. Mm, blush is just one of those things that I really really love. This is from Milani, this is Rose Doro and you can choose honestly any blush you want, in matte, um, satin. I like like something like this which is like marbled and it has like different flecks. This just gives your cheek like a little bit of dimension. It's just really pretty. So I just tap and you can do it in circles. Um, you can also do what I do and just sort of apply it on and see where the color is coming off. So with blushes, you can also apply them as eyeshadow. If you don't have like a shadow creating like eyeshadow color, just use your bronzer, just use your contour. And you also want it to blend seamlessly with the rest of your makeup. I like to apply a little bit to my nose. Now it's very trendy to do it, which is great because I always felt like just on the sides of the face is a little bit odd. With the nose, it just looks a little cuter. You can see that it gives a bit more dimension. It gives shine. Take the time to buff it out. So it's very important to get like a nice big fluffy brush. You can also dust off your powder brush and use the same brush. This is actually a very good like multi-purpose brush. This is also from Real Techniques. This is called the blush brush. Any other part, like even something like this, like a tapered one, you can use that as well. I'm going to show you how not to apply blush, which is too much. And only on the apples like that. You laugh, but honestly, I've seen people like this. My secondary school, like, what did she teach? History? She did this with like a light pink. Oh my god, I should have done light pink to show you what it looks like when it's like 
you can wear any coloured blush you want, but something light powdery pink is not going to look very natural. So I would pick something that's a bit warmer. This rose colour is really, really nice, but you don't want to do this, which is like in one spot and you don't blend. So it just looks very intense and it's also sitting lower, so it just drags your entire face down as well. Come on in, come on in. Have you missed my face? So this is how the train wreck is looking so far. Normal. Since we're here, why not? Let's also contour our noses. You can use the same blending brush that you were using before. You can clean it off with a tissue, whatever. Dab a little bit. And basically you want to create the same shadows that you naturally see. I like to do this as well because it creates like a more like natural look. If you had like a sharper nose bridge, like there would be shadow here too. I like to wrap around the tip as well. Some people also like to do this around the corners. You're not supposed to be seeing a very big dramatic difference. So this is how I would normally contour day to day. That would be enough for me. Oh, it's gonna be train wreck. And if I don't blend, it's just a straight line. You can see it as compared to this. Good, I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> Highlight. For this, you can use your fingers. I will be using my fingers because this is like super shock. But I'm gonna dab a little bit right on the highest points of my cheek. So it's not gonna be here. It's gonna be where you would apply eye cream on your orbital bone. You can put them in a circle, you can put them sort of like this. I like it like this because I think it sort of lifts my face. And it's important if you are not using a brush to really work at it slowly and make sure you're blending it throughout because at any point, this can look a little clumpy. If you are using a strictly like powder highlighter, any brush like this, um, something smaller, a more tapered brush, something like this will do. This gives the most natural, just hello, kind of like highlight. That goes on the tip of the nose. I like to do like a little gentle exclamation mark, so the dot is here. I also like to apply some right on the cupid's bow. Not too much, so if it goes too much, it can look a little crazy. If you also put it too high, too wide, like a streak. I know some people like to do it like this. To me, it just... It, it looks too distracting, I would say. Some people really like it. I still wouldn't suggest you putting it in like a straight streak though, like you're not going to war, so... Just gentle, gentle. So this is how my face looks so far, Jesus Christ. What I normally do versus what I wouldn't. I really wouldn't. And obviously, like, no one is going to look exactly like this when they're doing like stuff wrong but this is just a combination of all the wrong techniques so with that we're gonna do lipstick okay with lipstick i really recommend you start with something sheer first also because especially for me i mean i don't know about you but as a beginner like i do worry, sometimes it might go out of the line, sometimes it might smudge, it might get on my teeth. So I recommend you starting out with like coloured lip balm or very sheer lipstick. So this is from L'Oreal. It's the Daydream Rose. This entire line is super nice. It's just a nice sheer lipstick and I don't like to apply lip gloss. I don't recommend it for beginners because it also sticks to your hair and it just looks really messy and stuff. So I'm just gonna apply this and show you how it looks like. I wipe off like the majority of my lip balm just because I don't want it to slip and slide. And also because then when you apply the lipstick, it's not gonna have any colour payoff. It's also best to start out with a colour that's very similar to your natural lip colour. So when people say nude, they don't actually mean like skin nude. They mean your natural lip colour nudes. So this is something that's just a little bit peachier than my natural lip colour. And so it's very forgiving. Especially if I eat, I go around and I don't reapply, it sort of still can fade gracefully and if you want to touch up, it's very easy. With this, it's, it's super easy. You don't have to line anything, so you just go for it. 
Yeah, it's almost exactly like my natural lip colour. But it's good because it just gives my lips a little bit of dimension, a little bit of added like saturation. This is one of my least favourite things. Um, liquid lipstick, the very mattifying kind, the one from Colourpop. I don't know why I got so many. I like didn't use any of them at all. They were really drying and they look very unforgiving if you don't have a perfect application. Even I right now, like I don't have a perfect application unless I like really stare in the mirror and I spend a lot of time like really making sure that it's perfect. They crack, they give you that like butthole lip where like the inside sort of peels off and the outside's like a little crusty. And they also just feel very uncomfortable and they're not easy to like reapply. I don't actually have any of the ultra matte lips anymore. So I'm just using something from um, Candy Lab. It's not that I don't like this product, it's just, you know, I'm just trying to give an example. This is not applied too badly. But I also don't want to like purposely screw it up, so... But okay, that's the finished look. As you can tell, this is the side that I would usually work with. I would usually do. This is my go-to, like very simple, natural, easy, everyday makeup. And then this side is just a combination of mistakes I've made in the past, mistakes I've seen people make, and just like, you know, easy, common, like, things that people do wrongly with, like, their makeup. My skin tone, my skin type is unique to me, so it is a really special cocktail of, like, all these different makeup products to my preference. If you want to make sure that something works for you, go and try it out in stores when, you know, we can. Or try and look at reviews and swatches online to see what would best suit your skin tone. And also the products that I featured as like on the wrong side, these are not bad products. These are just products that I'm using to make a point. Like if this was in my perfect shade, like it wouldn't be an issue. But right now it just looks like a disaster because I meant to make it like a disaster, you know? So this is how it looks. Close up. Honestly, I'm not mad at the lip. It's, it's really cute. And then this is how the correct side looks. Hopefully this was in-depth enough for you. I know I've been sitting here talking for a really long time, but I hope you guys found it helpful as well. If you have personal, like, beginner-friendly tips of your own, feel free to leave them down below, share them with everyone else. And if you want me to do, like, a skincare version, why not? Let's do it. Let me know if you want to see that. Yeah, hairs out of the clip. It's been fun. Thank you for joining me tonight. Ooh. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click like, like it. And don't forget to also subscribe to my channel. I make new videos every week. And turn on your notifications so that you get my videos hot off the press. And I'll see you guys really soon. Have fun with your makeup. Bye.